guess what we're talking about this week. Can you take a guess, Macchiato? Emotional support animals. That's right, dude. You got it right. If you've been here, he said emotional support animals. That's what are we talking about. Um, so, is, this is him. Look how cute. Look how cute he is. He's like, hello, everybody. I'm Mr. Macchiato. Sometimes she calls me Maki. I really like bananas. Um, I love to do binking and jumping and hopping. And I do like cuddles sometimes, but right now I'm kind of pissed off right now. <laughs> I originally did not know what an emotional sport animal was. I never heard the term. It wasn't a very common thing. Um, so my doctor um, told me about them, but we'll kind of, we'll get into that in a second. So this is going to be a little emotional. Sorry. Okay. Um, uh, back in 2016, January 13th, I lost a friend to suicide. Um, her name is Taylor Morgan Spires. I have a tattoo for her. It's one of my favorites. It's got her initials in cursive. Opal. It's got her initials in cursive. Oh well. And then her pink was her favorite color. And then whenever I think about her, I just think about like life and just like beauty and just a lot of different things. So I thought a pink daisy um, would be cool. The pink gabura daisy. So she passed away on January 13th. And um, that was the most traumatic thing that I've ever been through. And that I've had to get through. Purple honey. Anyway, um, that was the most traumatic thing that I ever had to go through, and I honestly, I thought I was going to have to drop out of school, I thought, you know, I'm not going to be able to get through this, and somehow I did, um, and I was fine, and then um, August of that year, I just had a complete, okay, we're good. <laughs> Um, August of 2016, I had a, I guess you'll call it an emotional breakdown. Doctors were like, it was a depressive panic attack. I don't really know what happened, but I will just say that I completely lost it. I wanted to end my own life. Um, my best friend ended up having to drop out of college, and that was like another thing on top of my friend's suicide, there was just too much going on. So my doctor, after I was in the hospital and everything, told me about emotional support animals. And I was originally like, wait, that's a thing? <laughs> um, and you know, my doctor was like, yeah, you could get a cat. And I was like, I like cats. However, my dad's allergic. I'm pretty sure that I'm allergic and I just like, have dogs and everything and so, for some reason, I was like, what about a rabbit? <laughs> and that was the most random thing ever. Like, they were like, yeah, sure, you, you could have a rabbit, that's fine. Like, so yeah, um, it's kind of my story with emotional support animal, um, but I have some information next. So we're gonna be talking about emotional support animals or ESAs. ESAs are a type of animal that provide comfort to help relieve a symptom or effect of a person's disability. It can be any animal, it doesn't have to be a cat or a dog. I have a rabbit and I've seen people have, you know, lizards and birds as their ESAs. You do not need any kind of certificate to have an ESA, so please don't pay anyone online. It is a scam. I will say, however, if you're going to bring it somewhere where it isn't typically allowed, you will need specific documentation stating that it is an ESA from a doctor. Each and every state or country is different in their approaches to ESAs, but it does seem that there's a general way of doing things, and that is to first go through your doctor or your physician. The doctor will then usually refer you to a therapist, and then we'll complete a treatment plan together on how this animal will help alleviate the symptoms that you're experiencing. I got my rabbit Macchiato in 2016 and made him my emotional support animal that same year. The process only took a couple of weeks and I was able to bring him to campus with me. Also to add, I was able to have my own room because of him and because of my emotional difficulties. 
And to end on that, ESAs are for individual use only. I have not seen a whole family use an ESA, but they are typically an individual use. So therapy animals are a little different. They are specifically trained to provide support, comfort, and affection to groups of people, rather than just a single person. They're most likely dogs that are trained. There's not really any other animals that can be specifically trained as a therapy animal. They are employed by hospitals, retirement homes, schools, hospices, and at other places that are community-based. The training and certification process is lengthy, and not every dog is able to make it through these tests. Some disorders that I'll use as an example for therapy animals are like autism and Tourette's. Those work really well in groups. So once again, they're most likely going to be dogs that are highly trained. They're able to assist individuals that have disabilities, such as blindness, diabetes, hearing impairments, seizures, Tourette's, and even autism. They can do things like being a guide, they can hear for the person, seizure response, psychiatric service, mobility assistance, diabetic alert, autism support, allergy detection, beetle alcohol syndrome services, and so much more. They also can be used for individual use or community use. So that was all about emotional support animals and the differences between therapy and service animals as well. My experiences with having an emotional support animal have been really great. Um, he's just really, like, he's not super cuddly, but he will... He, if he feels safe, he'll let me hold him, and I just like to, he likes his ears being rubbed, it's that, it's really healthy, and it's just, most of the support animals, like, they're just there when you're sad, or anxious, or, you know, whatever. Having a bunny is like a mixture between a dog and a cat, like, I don't know how else to explain it, being a little child. But he's also an asshole sometimes, so kind of like a cat, I guess, more so. But very playful. I mean, cats are playful too, but um, cats sleep a lot. I feel like they can do it. Look at that judgmental look on your face. You were just like, these people. <laughs> but if you have like an emotional support animal that is like a dog, that's gonna be a little bit harder. Um, Cause dogs are a little bit more noisy. Cats are kind of noisy too, but they're usually, they can usually take care of themselves more. That's kind of why I th think I got a rabbit because they don't make noise and he just kind of, yeah, he's just, chilling and I mean he plays and he, he's kind of like a cat he just kind of does his own thing I mean he wants me to play with him sometimes but um for the most part he's okay with being by himself um for a couple hours a day when I'm like gone or when I was in school you know I was in classes and everything so yeah so um I hope that was a good little introduction video to local support animals um, and how they're different between therapy and service animals. And um, that's all that I got. This is another short video, but you know, so. bye bye, everybody.